days after Canada imposes sanctions on four Chinese officials, China hits back. They impose sanctions of their own. They did it on Saturday. China's foreign affairs minister announced sanctions on conservative MP Michael Jong, as well as on the House Subcommittee on International Human Rights. But why did they single out this one MP? What does it say about Canada's deteriorating relationship with China? Let's find out. We'll bring in the sanctioned MP himself. Michael Chong joins us. Uh, Mr. Chong, over the weekend, um, you were singled out. Uh, you can't travel to China. You can't do business with anyone from China. Um, first of all, what was your reaction, and, and what do you make of what China's done? Well, my reaction was that it was a confirmation that our efforts to bring attention to China's gross violations of human rights and international law was, is effective. Um, while I was the only person sanctioned in Canada, I was sanctioned alongside elected officials in other countries in the UK, Europe, and officials in the United States. And so collectively, I think it says that our, our efforts to draw attention to, these, to the genocide taking place against the Uyghur Muslim minority in Western China, our, our efforts to draw attention to China's violation of international law in its crackdown on Hong Kong is effective and that China is very worried about growing cries for it to stop the genocide and for it to respect international law in Hong Kong. I spoke to Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau on CTV Question Period on Sunday. He's clearly changed his attitude. Uh, obviously, there's the sanctions against China. He called China a bully. Um, he said the sanctions on you are, quote, an attack on uh, freedom of expression as well. Um, still, though, this government has not banned the Chinese uh, telecom company Huawei from Canada's 5G. In your view, uh, what do you make of the government's reaction to what China's done and what, in your view, they should do now? Well, I think it's interesting to note that China didn't sanction the Liberal government. It didn't sanction Liberal cabinet ministers. And I think the reason for that is they got a pass because they abstained from the vote in the House of Commons recognizing the Uyghur genocide. I think the government needs to do much more to hold China accountable for these violations of international law. I think, for starters, they should ban Huawei from the core of Canada's 5G network. It's clearly a threat to our national security, and it's a threat to our intellectual property regime. But they should do more. I think in order to further prevent the genocide taking place against the Uyghur people, they should ban tomatoes and uh, cotton imports from China. There's clear evidence that China is using the Uyghur people as forced laborers in a coercive state-run scheme to pick cotton and to produce tomatoes. China is one of the largest exporters of tomatoes and cottons around, cotton around the world. Um, by banning these products, we send a clear message that we are doing everything we can to prevent the continuation of this genocide. The final thing I think we should do immediately... Sorry, sorry, just on, on that note, just on that note, should Canada do that unilaterally or work with, again, like the uh, uh, declaration on arbitrary detention, like when over two dozen uh, de delegates or diplomats stood outside the embassy um, or in concert on the sanctions? Should Canada be doing this with a multilateral partner? So it takes more time, but it maybe has a bigger effect. We should absolutely be working multilaterally. But the challenge here is that the United States has already acted to ban imports from Xinjiang. They've banned tomato and cotton imports from China. Uh, the measures that the Liberal government has put in place uh, in January to ban imports produced uh, through forced labor aren't effective. In fact, you can go on eBay.ca or Amazon.ca today and purchase cotton products from Xinjiang that have a very high probability of being produced through forced labor. So we're calling on the government to introduce new, more effective measures, like our ally, the United States, has already done to prevent the importation of these products. And there was now the final thing, the third thing you want, so is getting rid of Huawei, the ban on some products that are produced in Xinjiang by the um, Uyghur Muslim minority population, and the third. Well, the third is we should be working multilaterally with our ally, the United States, to suspend payments to the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The government of Canada recently transferred $40 million of public money to that bank. This is an initiative of the government of China to further its model of authoritarian governance and influence throughout the Indo-Pacific region. We believe that the government should immediately suspend payments 
uh, to that bank. We think the government should also withdraw from that bank and join the United States in not participating in that initiative of China. So those are three things we think the government should immediately do to reinforce the international rules-based system. All right. Well, uh, you face sanctions. We'll find out if there's more sanctions as the tensions continue to escalate. And what Canada's uh, next position will be vis-a-vis -vis those things that you just mentioned. Michael Chan, I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, sir. Thank you.